Okay, a couple of classes ago, we were going through Daniel 1, 2, and 3. We took a diversion into the plowing time. Um, maybe we'll get diverted there again today. <clears throat> but in Daniel 1, the black is Daniel 1. Um, three tests with what they eat. First test, yes, everyone with me? Visual test. Um, Mark pointed out that the 10 doesn't actually go to here, but it does. The 10 actually goes to midnight, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Midnight is the 10th. Oh, midnight is the 10th? I would say it's the 10th day. The 10th day. <coughs> Well, maybe not. Have you got a reason for saying it? Yeah. Well, well, explain it. If it's the third, if it's, if it's one, the third, your first and your second test bring you to the beginning of the third. I would say that the that's the tenth tenth day. Maybe not. Maybe yeah, maybe I, I know. That's the that's the dilemma I'm trying to point out. If he hasn't got a let's say it, the Lord. We'll just leave it there. there. I was just want to point out that last night I came across a quote about Saul that when Jesus appeared to Saul, the light of heaven shone upon him ten times. So that we have another ten that we can apply when Jesus appeared to Saul. He was ten times. Ten times stronger. Mm. Yeah, we're not going there. <laughs> because because that's not that's not lining up with what we're we're at, and we gotta go, we'd have to go in and grapple with all that. What were you gonna say? Uh, is that uh, this is entering the trial for entering? And he finished the trial entering in the tenth day, and it's burning the next right. He uh, finishes the triumphal entry on the tenth day. Yeah, and uh, when the Israel passed to the Jordan River, rivers. And the Jordan rivers, when you pass by waters, means buying off. So when they finish the pass, is the tenth day of the first month also in mean like cry. So, so, but what are you, are you purposely choosing the word "finish" when he finishes the triumphal entry? Yeah, that would put it here. Okay, Michael saying it ends here. The tenth day. No, I'm saying the tenth day. It's the beginning of the tenth day. Okay, see, that's a dilemma. I want you to see. It's not. Are you want to try to explain it for us? But I want to make sure you see the dilemma. Go ahead. Um, and then we're going to move past this, Lord willing. Christ, with with two examples, with Daniel, you have three full weeks that go by, and then then he has the three touches. He has the Mara experience with. Christ, you have 40 full days, and then he's tested three times, which is the binding off experience as well. So there's at least two witnesses to show that you finish a time period, and then you have this three-step uh, binding off experience. Is the binding off part of the 40 days? Uh, that's always been a dilemma, but some it doesn't seem like it is. Yeah, it, it is. It was in history. He didn't fast forty. Well, I guess he does. It was come, forty, forty full days, and then he has. His then he has. Three his, times. He has his three tests on the fortieth day. It's okay, the forty-first day. I here's think. the. Okay, on the forty-first day, you yeah. think he was tested three? Well, times? it says he fasted forty full days. So. Or days, days and nights. Days so which is a full day. But one of his tests was fasting, and he refused. It's that, well, when you look at the at commentary. The end, but then he would fast for 41 days. Okay, here, here's the point. There is a way <coughs> to put the 10 all the way to the midnight cry, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we're seeing that. But the other point is, is at the end of 10 days, they were visually tested. And they were found to be fatter and fairer than all the other candidates. Okay, so they, they've already settled into their character at the second test, and the second test got to come before the third test. Okay, so here's the, ten, the visual test. 
that precedes the third, but we have evidence that ten goes to there, too. Everyone see the dilemma? Might be the point period thing, but it was brought up off the internet by Mark, so I'm just going to I'm going to address it. At the end of the ten days, when they're tested, they pass their visual test. The second test, you've settled into your character, and it's going to be manifested in the third test. Tyler, um, the you're, so you're putting the end the end of the second. I'm not test putting it in either place. I'm no, putting I'm, it both. I'm, at midnight is the end of the second test, the beginning of the third. Never mind, I answered my own question in my head. Okay. All right. Um, and when he comes in to the judgment, the test here, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they're found to be ten times better. They have understanding of vision. So in this history and dreams, prophecy, the prophetic message is opened up to them. Right? Okay. Um, we have the four whys, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, their eunuchs, fourth generation. It's Jehoiakim. Um, all right, then we went into chapter two. And, and it's at the end of the days that he's found, he's tested and found to be ten times wiser. Uh, and they were being instructed in the learning of the Chaldeans, which is dark sentences. So when they're found ten times better here, this is a reference to prophecy. They've, they've mastered or been given the gift of prophecy. Okay. The blue is chapter 2. This is where we got hung up. There's a gathering and a calling in chapter 2. And who gets called in this, in this chapter? I'm arguing that it's the four foolish that are marked. They're all called. The rise and the foolish are all called. But in chapter 1, because these are... Chapter 1 is the first angel's message. Chapter 2 is the second angel's message. Chapter 3 is the third angel's message. Can't have one without all three. So... We see the four foolish and the four wise in these two chapters that are called to 9 11. Yes? Why is it? I'm not using the number four as the, the sign of the wise and the foolish. I'm saying that in this you have four righteous, in this you have four called that are the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, the magicians, and the astrologers. Up here it's Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Um, why are we placing their calling at 9 11? Called faithful and chosen. Called faithful and chosen. Did you get called here, called here. In, in chapter 2, why are we okay. placing it at 9 11? Because they contrast with Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Um, verse 2, it says, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, you got a, you got second angel's message being emphasized. He dreamed dreams, but his dream troubles him, so we have what other kings that have troubling dreams? Pharaoh, Pharaoh and when Pharaoh has his troubling dream, he doesn't call Daniel in. Who's he calling? Joseph. And how old is Joseph? 30. So we're using that kind of logic to plug Nebuchadnezzar's troubling dream here. Nebuchadnezzar's going to have another troubling dream in chapter 4. Okay. Um, they come and stand before him, the, the Chaldeans, soothsayers, magicians, and astrologers. When is it that you stand? Nine eleven. Why? What's the what's the biblical logic? Ezekiel thirty seven. Ezekiel thirty seven. The the message of the east wind arrives and they stand upon their feet a mighty army. So these guys are standing too. Because the priests are called here, 
but there's two classes of priests. So these guys are standing, and then they have, this is, if there was a weak piece of, lo there's probably lots, but if there's a weak piece of logic in what I'm saying about Daniel 2, this is the one that you might want to challenge. But verses 4 and 7 of Daniel chapter 2, <clears throat> they give the, Nebuchadnezzar the same response. Tell us the dream and, and we'll give you the interpretation. So I'm saying this is the three steps illustrated and the second step, step is verse 4 and 7 where they have a doubling to, of their response. And uh, then the third test is uh, verses 10 through 12. Here's where it switches to Syriac. And what does that mean? Okay, we're, we're, go ahead. We suggested that it might be the changing of externally the United States from speaking from a lamb to a dragon and internally, uh, marked by the Patriot Act, and internally it would be spiritual formation change the mark of the language that is being used by Adventism being changed from the biblical principles to Jesuit techniques. Okay, and then they got a decree. And uh, area, here's where we, we broke down, right? We, this is as far as we got. Arioch's haste. Um, Arioch comes in to Daniel in haste, and then he comes in to Nebuchadnezzar in haste. Are we identifying this as the binding off period for the priests, this here, history here in chapter 2? Yes? Okay, so over here, this is the binding off for the, the priests. I don't remember what that is about, but this is based upon, the black is based upon Daniel 1. In Daniel 2, you have Arioch's haste at both the end and the beginning. Um, what outs do we have in chapter 2 that we need to plug in there? Um, you have prayer. This is what Daniel resorts to, right? You have Daniel. He's not expressed in a group of four. He's expressed as a single with a group of three. So I'm saying that when he goes to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this history, this binding off history, they being isolated grammatically from them are representing the three there. They pray, um, and it was revealed to him when? In the night. What else goes in this from this chapter? Um, Where's the decree? Midnight. The decree. Um, here, is this different? Oh, the decree goes forth here. Yes? Is that how we express it? Ariax going forth with the decree. Decree. Um, more? Why did we say it was at 9 11? The decree? This is the call in the, oh, okay. it's the call, um, but this is the, the death decree, yep. although it is, I don't want to confuse people, death decree is way down there, but the, the decree to slay, the decree to slay. all right. What outside of chapter two, so we can move into chapter three? Yeah, an inquiry is right there from chapter 1. Is there an inquiry in chapter 2? Why is the king's decree so hasty? Daniel makes an inquiry of the Lord to reveal him the secret and the vision. All right, let's read them. Figure out if they're, if they're the, a doubling of the inquiry or... Pardon me? Verse 15. Verse 15. You want to read that, Brother Michael? He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? And Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. 
<laughs> oh, then he asks, yeah, then Daniel goes and asks the king for time. I don't know. Ask for time. Because we put the time. The time is between the two. Be, from the beginning, from midnight to the midnight cry, the time, so. Like, then that would put the inquiry both at the midnight. Both at the midnight. Because he would ask Ariok and then he asks the king. If that's the. But what can we put also the inquiry of Daniel born to the Lord with these three friends to ask him to reveal him this, the, the dream and the secret that they would spare his life? That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Where are they going to perish at? We'll answer your question in a second. Where are they going to perish at? I'm going to put it over here. Because Esther says, if I perish, I perish. Esther, if I perish, I perish. So is that a third inquiry? It would be. Yeah. He's, there's an inquiry to Arioch, to Nebuchadnezzar, and to God. In verse 26, there's an inquiry. Verse 26 of chapter 2. Read it for us, sister. It says, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou <coughs> able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? <coughs> okay, so that's over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a name change there, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, a name change. And this is an inquiry. <coughs> Go ahead. Verse 25 to this, and hates again. Yes. Yeah, I, I, that A-H, A-H. Oh, oh, both. Oh, oh. It's at both ends of it. Though the first one's not necessarily Ariok being in haste, it's just a hasty decree from the king. Who brought it? Ariok. But it doesn't, there's nothing that's... I'm not, uh, yeah, but they're both... It's just haste, haste. Ariok is involved with haste here and haste there, whatever that means. But what, what about these three inquiries? Are these a second witness to these three steps in this history? Inquire of Ariok, Nebuchadnezzar, and God. What about the inquiry that Nebuchadnezzar does as to the false wise men? What about what? The inquiry that, that Nebuchadnezzar has done to the false wise men. Tell me the dream. Tell me the dream. Uh, he actually deals with them three times on that part, and he says they can do it. That's over here. One, okay. two, three. Okay, I would think that these three inquiries that we've noted in here, beginning here, are right here. And it's, and it's just showing that God's people are between God for wisdom and understanding and and, 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 and Nebuchadnezzar asked a question here of Daniel. Can you make it known? Is that what it is? And then Arioch asking him for time. Okay, the reason I think that fits is that these two are human beings. This is God. There's a distinction between the third. If you have three, and there's a distinction between the third many times. So three angels. The king. The king? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back through them. Where's the first? Verse 15. Is this the first inquiry? Why is the decree so hasty? Number one. Number two. Then Daniel went in, next verse, and desired of the king that he would give him time. And then in verse... 17 and 18, reading verse 18, they would desire the mercies of God concerning this secret. Verse 4. Verse 4. There is 4. Where's the other one? Verse 26. Verse But that's over here. That's over here. 
three-one combination if you want to do that. But this inquiry is at this way, Mark. These three are in the binding off. Wouldn't the fourth just be marking that last one? Wouldn't it just be marking the number four at that point? Because if one begins with the midnight, or one begins with midnight, and then one ends right at the midnight cry, then it's just four. <coughs> okay, that could be. <coughs> so you got four inquiries. Where do you get an inquiry for step eighteen? You're, you're desiring the mercies of heaven. <coughs> you're asking God to reveal this truth to you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Well, explain what it is then. What's Daniel doing? Um, well, Read verse 17 and 18. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known unto Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. I know they desire to know, but that doesn't, still doesn't sound like an inquiry to me. You're asking, God, you're asking God for the truth. Well, it doesn't... You have to read into the context. You can't just literally take it where it's... It doesn't have a question mark in the grammatical layout, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, but ask and you shall receive. You're not going to get an answer from God if you don't ask. It was actually a double inquiry of the Lord because Daniel was requesting for him to reveal in the dream and then also in the interpretation of thereof. That's, that's one in my book. I get your point, but that's one. That's minutia I'm not prepared to grapple with. Yes, my brother Jack. The next verse says yeah. that the answer was given to them, so there yeah. had to be an inquiry to get the answer. Is, um, right? Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. But it's okay. very blah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to get it. It's not so Okay, so what are we leaving out of Daniel 2? What do we see the second angel's message arriving here, Daniel 2, right? Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, dream dreams. This is the arrival of the second angel's message at 9-11, as we understand that it does. Takes us to the midnight cry, but it's emphasizing this binding off. Yes? What else are we leaving out of there? The latter days. The latter days? Where is that? Verse 28. And verse 28 says, um, But there is a God in heaven that reveals a secret and make it known to the king of Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Okay, so what is your point about that? It's revealed here, though. Yeah. Latter days. Days revealed. And latter days explained. And what goes with that, Sister Tamina? Daniel standing in his lot. Daniel standing in his lot. Why? At the end, <clears throat> at the end of the day. I don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> That's there, but not for this reason. What goes if the latter days are uh, opened up to Daniel here? He gives them. He gives the message of the image to Nebuchadnezzar here, the latter days. But what goes with that in the book of Daniel? Daniel ten fourteen. Gabriel reveals to Daniel what shall befall thy people in the latter days have to I'm thinking that this here because it is the image the kingdoms of Bible prophecy it's the external but Daniel 10 14 is the internal what shall befall thy people in the latter days but they got to go right here so when Daniel's this prophecy is opened up to Daniel when he comes out here 
he has an understanding of prophecy that includes both external and internal, and he's going to explain it to Nebuchadnezzar. I have a question on verse 30. We've never really dealt with this, but when Daniel is responding back to Nebuchadnezzar, it says that this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that they shall know the interpretation to the king, and that thou mayest know the thoughts of thy heart. Could that be the Mar experience? What? what the, knowing the thoughts of your own heart. I mean, when you come face to face with Christ, you know, you rec recognize that you, you have this bitter experience and how wicked you are. So you're seeing Nebuchadnezzar having a Mara experience. Well, I'm just saying it could that be because of what Daniel's telling Nebuchadnezzar, why this, give, why this dream was given to him and the interpretation thereof, that he may know his own heart thoughts. His own wickedness and selfishness and frightfulness. And we see that in Perhaps, but you're reading into that. Okay. Right? Because he has a dream he's, uh, about this image. Well, Daniel's telling him that. That's why the Lord gave him that dream. But it doesn't come until later that he recognizes who he really is until chapter 4. Till he recognizes who he... Who, who, Nebuchadnezzar. How, he, in chapter 2 he recognizes thou, O king, or the head of gold. Right. I'm, I'm thinking the thoughts of his hearts was when he was having the dream, even though it leaves him, he's wanting to know what these these symbols represent. And that's what he gets wrapped up in later. He wants to, he, after he understands he's this symbol, he wants to make himself the whole symbol. Well, when you look in the Bible, thoughts of your heart, it's actually connected with character. So yeah, I get that, but uh, you, you may be right. For me, I'd really have to force that. In, in chapter 2 here, can you um, help me with verse 27? Daniel um, goes before the king, and then he questions the king, cannot the, you know, the four generations, can, cannot, cannot the astrologers, magicians, soothsayers, and the, the, you know, the wise men of the land, can't they, can't they answer this? There's a reason why that's there. Why is that there? It's where's he? Where's he asking this question? He's where is it? Not no. Where is he at up here? He's standing the He's at the midnight cry, right? He's yes. The, That's yes. where he's asking the question. Who's he asking it to? The king. Okay. So he's at. And w what's this question doing? It's identifying the 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 the, the, the you know, apostasy of. Four generations of Adventism. Really? I think. Okay, it could be, but it, it, that might be at a deeper level. But what I'm seeing is he, it's it's emphasizing the distinction between the wise and the wicked. Correct. The okay. wise understand, but the wicked do not understand. So this yes. question is put in place. It's not a question, but it's a statement. Yeah. It defines it at that point in time. Yeah. It. They've been clearly revealed. Gotcha. What? So what does that mean to us? Because that's what it's about, right? Is us. It means that from from here to here is the testing process for the priest. When you get to this point here, everyone's going to see the distinction between the wise and foolish priests. Even though the foolish priests have been making claims about their righteousness all the way through, it's going to be totally revealed right here yep. that there's a distinction. How's that? What is it that reveals it? Because the, the, the wise understand the prophetic message. Mm -hmm. right. And what, what is it that they understand? What, what's the dynamic that proves they understand it? The They're prediction. Yeah, They're going to make a prediction back here that's going to get fulfilled here. Then there's no question marks about these two classes here. Right? Yes, my brother is that you following us? Yes? Okay. What's yes in Portuguese? Sim. Sí. Si, sí. okay. It's Espanol. Sim? It has an M on it? You don't pronounce it. Sim. It's weird. Sim. Like sin? Sim. 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 Okay. I wanted to just add a testimony to what the, I thought I brought in. It was Deuteron Deuteronomy A2. 
uh, that basically points out to be a test. So that's what I was trying to bring that up. It says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what is in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. And what's the point? I, I was making the connection with Daniel 2.30. Uh, we'll make that it. thou mayest know the thoughts of thy heart as being a test. The thoughts of thy heart as being a test. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other thoughts on Daniel 2? I don't remember if we put everything in place from previous. Yes? Um, the only thing that I know that we missed was the last two verses. Um, Daniel's made a great man and a ruler. Gifts. And there's gifts and positions bestowed. And then also the request yeah, of Daniel for his three friends. Gifts. Isn't that a gift? <clears throat> yeah, the millionaire is going to give me a million dollars. They say, fine, but would you also give Tabo and Michael $100,000 each? Okay, so I got the gifts, but they're getting gifts too. There's probably more to it, but you could wrap it all up in gifts. Jack was asking me, is, that a, is there a difference between a request and inquiry? <clears throat> So Probably like, not, because so we're 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 inquiry. look we're use any kind of request or inquiry that comes at this way mark and say it's the inquiry. <coughs> right. So is this another inquiry in chapter two? At okay. that way mark. Yeah. Where? He requested the king in verse forty nine that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be set up over the affairs of the So you want to make that an inquiry? Uh, Jack was asking that. I was just wondering what the difference was. No, there we have an inquiry there already, right? In verse what twenty five was it? So what would that be? A doubling. If you want to include that, we can put a double inquiry right here. He's setting in the gate. I have a question about um, have we applied the fact that the prediction in Daniel two specifically is actually future from the midnight cry? Because Daniel's unfolding for this whole vision that is going to take place after the at least at and after the midnight Right. Because in this chapter, I don't I don't know if we see that the prediction is at midnight, or have we seen that in this that uh -huh. in chapter two specifically? It's revealed in the night. It's revealed at night. Revealed in the night. Oh, okay, so it's revealed to Daniel in the night, and then he goes to the king and he makes known this thing. But the thing he's making known is about the future, future event. Yeah. So he's making a prediction. Just, I was just saying, but I he's he's making a prediction when he asks the king for time. He's saying, "Give me the time, and I'll be able to give it to you." Yeah. He's he's predicting that his ability to do so would come to pass. So, what are you saying about that being future tense? Oh, I'm just saying that there's a prediction. The prediction is this. Okay, so how is this future tense to this? What are you saying? Well, he's standing at the midnight cry and, and, and he's making a prediction about the fall of the United States. Is he making a prediction? I thought he made the prediction back here. This is where I was addressing. Because he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't explain to the king the statue until the midnight cry. Okay, but he makes a prediction here based upon other lines, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's a prediction... Is going to be here. When he's coming in here, is this a, a, a prediction or an explanation? I think it's a prediction. What is it then? It's a, it's a prediction about the fall and the rise and fall of the kingdom. Prediction of the rise and fall of kingdoms. It's a prediction about the Sunday law, the, the modern Rome coming together with the Sunday law. <laughs> That's the way I've understood it, at least. Like, it's future tense. It's the latter days, which is the Sunday law, the end of days, the, you know. Really? You guys, you guys think the explanation of this is a prediction about, rather than the rise and fall of kingdoms, let's just keep, keep it at one level. It's a, a prediction about the fall of Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. yeah. The head. Yeah, he's saying that you're not going to continue. 
speaking of all the um, the satanic kingdom uh, being taken down and the what's the first the kingdom of God being reestablished re with the stone yeah but what's the first Babylon. Okay, who's he talking to? to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. So he's explaining to him, he's saying, this is showing the sequence of kingdoms. You're that first kingdom. You're going to fall. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's what you're saying. Yeah, he's saying you're, you're about to fall. And okay. there's nothing you can do. And where's he going to fall? Sunday last Sunday. Okay, so how do we express this? I was just I was just saying that I, though we can see a prediction in that Daniel says I'm going to unfold for you this vision, I think I think there's also we've seen in other places I can think of where but there's a prediction also in that cry. Do you do you, he can't remember a backup for that? So there if there is and he can't remember it. <coughs> What's his justification for standing upon what he's saying anyway? Midnight and the midnight cry. Midnight to the midnight cry are, are going to be repeated Sunday here. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's a prediction here, there's fractally, there's going to be a <laughs> prediction here. Yeah. And so the prediction here is him telling Nebuchadnezzar, Thou, O king, are the head of gold. But there is another kingdom coming after you that's inferior to you. Okay, so he's telling him... In fact, this is probably the, the human motivation for Nebuchadnezzar saying, I want to build a solid gold statue. I don't want this inferior kingdom to replace me. In fact, it is the motivation. Yeah. So, so are we saying that midnight Daniel is giving, telling him the dream and at midnight cry he's giving the interpretation? No, we're saying that upon other lines of prophecy, we know that there's a prediction here. So even though that prediction isn't given explicitly the details of what it is in Daniel 2, we can still see a prediction inferred when Daniel goes in before the king and says, Give me time and I'll make the dream known unto you. He's making a prediction to Nebuchadnezzar saying, I will, I will have the ability to explain this to you. So there is a prediction marked here, but it's, it's vague. You need the other lines of the prediction to fill in what the prediction is going to be for us at the end of the world. Right? So, yeah. again, I'm going to throw this thought in there. You know, I'll just talk about the thoughts of his own heart. Could that prediction be telling, foretelling Nebuchadnezzar, if you don't know the thoughts of your heart, or if you don't understand your own heart, you're going to fall? No, well, that, maybe, but because on verse forty-six it says that Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face, and so Nebuchadnezzar is being humbled after he heard the interpretation of the dream. He falls upon his face, and we know that this is part of the Maravit experience. So, you're saying that Nebuchadnezzar here is going into a Mara, a binding off. He fell, he fell upon his face. He accepted it as... Yeah, but you're, that's what face. you're saying, yeah. right? That this is the binding off, that Nebuchadnezzar here is illustrating a binding off period. Yeah, whoever he represents in that period. I mean, that's what it sounds like. That could be wrong. Anyone going to support her on that one? Tyler's shaking his head no. Jack's got to support her because no. he's driving home with her after this so. time. Okay. Because it says he fell on his face and worshipped Daniel. But Daniel was representing God. They even pointed that out before he started. He okay, you guys deal with that part on the way <laughs> drive home. What are you going to say? If it's the United States, then the United States isn't, we know, going to pass any test. They're not going to be bound off in any sort of positive way where they come out on top, so. Okay, so if we ever get, that I don't think we'll get in this trimester, through all six chapters, I would like to point out that right here, Nebuchadnezzar is gonna go into experiences seven times in Daniel chapter four. And at the end of it, he's going to pop out of that history a righteous, justified person. Okay, and that history is based upon a troubling dream just like this history. So, this is the binding off period for the seven times for Nebuchadnezzar. This is the binding off of the Levites. 
so maybe this does plug into that. He'd have to be a Levite then? He would be representing Levites there at the internal level. And that would mean that Belshazzar, when he dies that very night in chapter 5, represents the dead Levites. Does that square with our understanding? Probably. Okay, so then that's, that's, a, that's my argument about these chapters as we pull them together. Are they going to define each other? Let's, let's go to chapter 3. Everyone remember chapter 3? Okay, chapter 3 is, is definitely the Sunday Law, but on many references in the spirit of prophecy, right? Okay, so Daniel's not there. Um, are, are we going to have, it's been so long that uh, we have to read the whole thing? I don't, we don't want to. Nebuchadnezzar is going to set up an image that's solid gold. And he, there's going to come a point then when he's going to play the music that you've got to worship it. So the setting up has to be something that takes place in advance of the worship. So where is the image set up? Midnight cry, right here. This is the image set up. This is chapter 3 now, right? Okay. Um, it's solid gold image. We have a gathering in verse 2. Um, no. Yeah. No. The it's incomplete so. thought, my sister oh. Tamina. Well, you didn't let me finish. Okay. <laughs> he gathers eight groups of people. Like. Okay, but it's still incomplete. Okay. Were you not finished? No, I'm done. <laughs> what? In verse 2 and 3, there is a oh, double yes, gathering yes. of eight entities. <laughs> okay, double eights. Which together means? Double eights, which makes 16, so why is 16 important? Because 16, yeah, it's marked at the Sunday Law. The 16th is the Sunday Law, based upon what? Uh, the first fruits, 16th day of the first month. First or, fruits? Yeah, or the cleansing of the sanctuary, eight days for the priest, eight days. Second Chronicles 29, you have... Eight in here for the priest, eight in here for the Levites. But in this history, you expect a doubling. Okay. Um, what happens in verse 4? And where does this take, where does this loud cry take place? Pardon me? Midnight cry. This is the, the midnight cry? You sure about this? Why is it at the midnight cry? Because it typifies a loud cry at the Sunday law. Yeah, it, it's a joke okay to put it there, we know, but why, what, um, what is it, uh, contextual justification do you have, my brother Igor, for plugging in verse 4? You're going off your notes? Yeah, you're assuming Pardon me? You're, you're preaching in Saturday. No, 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 no. I, I'm not asking if you've heard it from some other human Maybe. being. I want to know what your justification <laughs> for saying that is. The, the herd cry it out loud. It's, it's enough for... Why isn't that over here? Well, there's... We are talking about the history of the Levites. <sighs> Let's talk about Daniel chapter 3. Okay. Because the image. The image is being set up. It's, it's future tense, is it not? My brother Igor, is it future tense? Verse 4, Then an a, a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear. So the music's future tense. So he's got to be back here. This is a, the announcement of something that's coming in the future. Right? Okay, uh, and who, verse 6, someone read verse 6 who hasn't read. 
And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Where is that hour? <coughs> This is the. The end of the decree. This is the implementation of the decree, and uh, this is what the hour. Did you already write yeah. music? Yeah. Same hour. The same hour. Okay, hour. And I'm saying that this is this hour here. Right? This is the 11th hour workers. Okay, so music is going to play here. What else? Okay, what about the distinctions between verse 5, 7, 10, uh, and 6, 15? The worship and the image. The worship of the image. It's also a, a, a false type of worship music compared to the sanctuary music. Using okay, what I'm looking at is why is there four references to this music and the second one is different than the other three? What does the second one have? Is that heater on? 78 in here. Um, I don't know if you, you can he open that door without getting in trouble. Just try thunder it? outside. Yeah. So you can try. Okay. Turn Leave the door shut. Can, oh, can it's raining though. Can you trouble with that door? Can the fan be on or no? Can can the the on or no? What what's the dis? Pardon me. I don't know. Just uh, I'm sorry. Forget this. Let's just keep moving forward. What's the distinction between? <coughs> The second and the other three. There's one missing. There's what one missing. is it? The, the dulcimer. And what is that? Singing. It's the singing. The Levites were the ones who sing. The Levites are the ones who sing. Yeah, the priests are the ones who Okay, so we got four references to it. Where would we plug those in? Do we plug them in all together? Or at various way marks along the way? And why is it? important to know that the Levites sing. Is it the Levites that are going to sing here? Yes. No. It's the woman of Isaiah 23. <coughs> okay, this is about her. I mean, they're, they're, the, the Levites are going to sing there too, the loud cry, no doubt about it, but the singing is more about the Sunday law and the activity of Tyre and the papacy. Doesn't the counterfeit always comes before the real thing. Yeah. Which means what? The counter, the, the counterfeit singing. Well, they come simultaneously, but maybe it's back in here where you're going to mark the counterfeit. I forgot where it is, but um, <clears throat> one of the 120s that we mark, the Levites and the priests are all in unity, and there's 120 people singing or playing flutes. It's in Chronicles it's somewhere. Yeah, the dedication of the, the temple. So it, that's to what Tanya's saying, the counterfeit with the true. There's always a good singing and a bad singing. Yep. At the same time. What is that? <coughs> Chapter 5 of <coughs> First Kings? First yeah, oh, maybe it's First, first, first Chronicles. I thought it was Chronicles, but... I think it's First Chronicles. Chapter 5. Okay, so um, we won't go there. <laughs> verse 8, what happens? We're not making any the, the accusation. Okay, there's an accusation. <coughs> Enemies activity. Pardon me? Eni enemy activity. activity. Activities of the enemies. Okay. I'm gonna put accusation, <coughs> but I understand what you're saying. Accusation. Uh, we have six instruments. Explain. Six instruments playing where? Verse 7. 
Seven. Versus Stan, Tim's lose. Fifteen. Okay, tell us what that means. It's relation with worship, so... Well, it, if you're going on instruments playing, then it's in all four of those verses. The three verses you named, the only difference is they also have music, but the one doesn't have, or singing. Oh, yeah. Singing. So if you're going just strictly on instruments, all four of the verses have six instruments. To say the truth there is one, it is... Mm. Alright, uh... Verse 7 is 5. Mm. Okay, um, how is his relation with worship? I, I don't know, it's in the hour, in the last chapter. We see the hour in the night righteous in the law. So, I don't know if in death, that way, it would be better to be with a friend so they want, but it's not like here. So I, don't I don't know what you're saying. I'm not following it's your logic. I'm last, trying. Last chapter. Uh, In chapter hour, 2? Chapter 2, the hour. Uh, Did it say hour? In chapter 2? I guess. Time. It said time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Time. But go ahead. Yeah. So I thought this hour should be the same place, but uh, I really don't know. It's because you have the number six, and you know the number six is the night cry, because it's the wedding <coughs> in, the, in the creation of the earth. Uh, you have a lot of number six in the night cry. And you have four times talking about that. I don't know it's more. So I believe it's the midnight cry. But What's the midnight cry that you believe? Uh, the six instruments. And the worship. Okay, so you're saying verse 7. 3. Uh, no, sorry, verse 5. five. He's saying that those six instruments, rather than being at the Sunday law, should be at the midnight cry or the midnight period because of the hour. Which I disagree. And because of the. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the, okay, so. First off, one thing that we know is from midnight to the midnight cry is an hour. From midnight cry to the Sunday law is an hour. And from Sunday law to the close probation is an hour. So if you look at Jeff's illustration on the right-hand side of the board, you see that that time, they all are parallel at one level. Mm -hmm. But you have to put this at the Sunday law crisis because of the references from the spirit of prophecy okay. that put this test at the Sunday law. Yeah, the, the binding offs can be treated as a symbol where you bring them together line upon line and, and gather the information from them. But do you see what he's trying to do? There's four references to this music and he's trying evidently to line them up with these way marks. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. <clears throat> I tried that too. But I, I passed over it this time because I haven't settled into it. I was hoping he had a key to put that in place. <coughs> keep, keep thinking that one and praying that one through, my brother Daniel. Let's move on. The accused, he has made a key. Uh, he's made a decree in verse 10. Okay. Then in his rage, and where's his visage change? Nineteen. Oh, it's all the way down at nineteen. Okay, I don't want to. There's an inquiry at <coughs> in verse fourteen. Verse fourteen, there is an inquiry. A gathering in thirteen. A gathering in thirteen. Read us the, the the gathering. What's it say? Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Sadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Okay, so there's a gathering and an inquiry. They're already, their character's already set. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, we're going to not bow down to your, your God. And their faith is expressed in verse 17. You got a hand in 15? Deliver you out of my hands. Yeah, and yeah, I was making the same point in verse 17. 
who is God that shall deliver you out of my hands? This is Nebuchadnezzar. And then verse 17, they're saying, he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. So, the hand is here. And uh, the issue is whether he will or will not deliver them, which he's going to do. Does um, verse 13, uh, where it says, and his range and fur commanded to bring those um, friends in, does this line up with Daniel 11, verse 44, where the king of the north goes forth out of Egypt to, to destroy many? Yeah, verse 44. Tidings out of the east and the north trouble him. Because mm -hmm. where does verse 44 get applied? When does it begin? If you follow verse 40, collapse the Soviet Union, verse 41, Sunday law in the United States, verse 42, 43, the ten kings given their kingdom to the papacy, then verse 44, and tidings out of the east and north shall trouble him. You can think that it's sequential. That verse 44 comes after the ten kings have given their kingdom to the beast. But that's, this isn't so. Where does verse 44 kick into history? It starts at the sun. At, right here. Verse, this is verse 41 and verse 44, right at the same place. Tidings out of the east and the north shall trouble him. So you've got Islam there again. He's going to go forth with what? Great fury to... Yes. Okay, so you've got his fury marked here in verse 13. 13. Rage and fury in agreement with verse 44 of Daniel 11. Um, any other things before we... Yeah. Verse 19, he's now full of fury. He's filled up his cup. Where are you <clears throat> marking the decree at verse 10? At verse 10, Thou, O King, hast made a decree. That would be back here. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to start plugging some of this in. This is the binding off for the Levites. So there's a decree. Double eights, eight times two, a loud cry, and a decree. Ah, uh, we got decree, image set up, image set up. All right. And at the Sunday law, we have music, accusation, <coughs> inquiry, gathering the hand and fury. Anything else in chapter? Yeah. Turn in 21. Where are they bound? <coughs> there. Verse 19, he speaks this is and the uh, furnace is heated up seven times. Seven times, seven times, heated? More. Yep. Hotter. Hotter. Change of his visage. His visage changes. Did not write down. In verse 24, we have an inquiry, and he, Nebuchadnezzar is astonished, and he rose up in haste. Astonished. Verse 29, we have a counter decree. Counter decree. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything. Um. In verse 27, you have a gathering to get again of the governors, the captains, the king counselors. 25. Uh, 27, that's like past tense. Right? Being gathered together. 
25 have a heroin well, bean? Nebuchadnezzar goes to the mouth of right here, so then came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. But they were already there. Yeah, they were, they're gathered. We already have that mark. <coughs> but they say, okay, they're gathered here now. Right. Being does gathered. Does the four have a significance? Does the four have a significance? Where's the four? There's four men in the fire. Four men in the fire. But it points out there was three and then one. Three and one. Yeah. And then that they were burnt, that they were bound in their coats. They, they were bound. Down. Right there. So yeah. they've already, they're character is set when they come to this history. And they felt Just like Daniel's character is set at the end of the ten days. There's a heavenly being. A heavenly what? Uh, being. 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 Uh, when Christ. the Christ. Christ. Divine presence or divine yeah. down. Divine. You're saying that's the Mara Mare. Yeah. Well, Christ comes in and yeah. they fell down. Mm -hmm. down so. Mara experience. I think, uh, and I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I said it last time too, but in verse 29, that the decree from Nebuchadnezzar is actually the Sunday law decree. Because this decree is not a righteous, I don't want to get into the righteous and righteous thing, but this decree from the spirit of prophecy is is not a good thing. No, it's a, it's not a, yeah, it, yeah. It, it seems like but it's different. It's different than this decree that they have to bow down yeah. when the music yeah. plays. Yeah. But this music to bow down is the Sunday law decree. So there, but you're saying that this is the, your decree here, this counter decree is a Sunday law decree, even though we know they're different. So we can acknowledge it, but I don't know how to explain it. I know what you're saying, and I know the Spirit of Prophecy says that. The, the king doesn't have the right to force anyone's conscience, even if he's doing it what he thinks is a righteous reason. In verse 24, there's also um, a haste. He rose up in haste. Astonied rose up in haste and spake. Okay, so we got haste and speaking. I'm going to put... Speaking is there. Underneath bound is speaking. Speaks. Okay, where's the decree? Do we have a decree here? Counter decree. Okay, I'm going to put speak together. Although, it may not be the exact... Is that everything? Yeah. Uh, where is... Uh, Tyler, Tamina, after Brother Daniel. Okay. After. after you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Verse 27 uh, is C. Verse what? 27. Okay. Neither were their codes changed. So it's like your character. Uh, yeah, we mentioned that. How are we going to put it? Bound. I'll put it under bound. Set. Sealed. Under coats. Yes, Tyler. We had suggested once, um, a long time ago, while we've been doing this, that uh, maybe this last decree that he makes would be the universal Sunday law decree. And really? Yeah, we, it's been suggested. I don't know. And my question is, because we're talking about it, is is that not a valid? Um, is that a valid? Um, anyone yeah. want to help him on that? Is it is it a valid? Is it a valid way to say uh, way to show that that it's the universal decree? You know, Michael's suggesting maybe it's the Sunday law, but you're saying. It's different, so yeah, that's you know. You got we, some other internal justification for making this <coughs> hypothesis. The only one that I could give is that right after he makes that decree, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are all lifted up. It's their, it's their midnight cry experience, which would be the closer probation at one level, because 
that's when they're lifted up. They're lifted up here? Yeah. I, I would maybe. Okay, the reason that I'm challenging you about on this is because for years I've I've thought that that's in there in Daniel 3 in a different way. There's actually two tests. It's a Sunday law test. They have the Sunday law test. Then there's an accusation saying, hey, there's some people that didn't bow down. So he repeats the Sunday law test. He heats up this furnace seven times, says, we're going to do this all over again and see if you really are going to stand firm. So I don't, I don't want to move out of this history because that, that's what's being focused on. But there is an intimation of two Sunday laws. And in prophecy, there are two Sunday laws. There's the Sunday law in the United States and the world Sunday law. Um, so, you can, I can see that at least inferred in there with the two opportunities that they get to have that test, but also <coughs> perhaps the counter decree is also inferring this too. Well, in the, the first time when Nebuchadnezzar makes a decree, he basically... I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Tamina had her hand first. Oh, that's fine. I was just going to say that in verse 29, the decree has the same uh, consequences as the decree in chapter 2 in verse 5, um, that the people are cut in pieces and the house is made a dung hill if they don't obey the, the, the decree. And the one in chapter 2, we mark at 9-11, and in chapter 3, there's a lower close of probation. I was wondering, how can we marry those up? Because they're quite similar phrase. Well, why, why do you have a problem marrying that up? The Sunday, if this is the Sunday law decree that we know is it Sunday and the consequence is your house is going to be made a dunghill and there's a decree that goes forth at 9-11 with the same consequences, were they intending to pass that law right there at 9-11? Yeah. So that, the decree that's here has its... It's the identical decree at one level. Identical purpose, right? Okay, Sister Tanya, then Jack. Well, I was just pointing out that in the first requirement, the leaders were included, but in verse 29, for the second degree that he makes, it, it's only the nation, people, and languages. It seems like the leadership is, is not mentioned. There's a distinction between those two. Uh, what verse are you making the distinction in verse 29 with? When the first degree came forth, it basically what all... What verse? Um, three. When they gather the princes, the governor, the captain, the judges, the treasurer, the council, the sheriffs, and so forth. They're mentioned too, but here in verse 29, it says, I make a degree that every na people, nation, and language, the leadership is not mentioned in verse 29 to where the other ones, all these other eight different type of people, plus, you know, other... That might be another argument no, for it the It is mentioned in world. 27. He gathered them together, the leaders, the... Yeah, but they're not mentioned. I understand that, but they're not mentioned when he points out the degree to where the other one it does. It's old. No, they are. You can't separate that contextually from <coughs> there. It's one thought. It's only in different verses because of the translation. Okay. Yeah. It says, and the prince of so and so and so saw these men in verse 27. In verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spake at that point. So he's speaking right there in their presence. And therefore, I make a decree. They're all there. The verses are isolating it the way you are suggesting. But any other thoughts on that? Is it, is it a gift in thirty? The promotion is a gift. A gift in thirty? It, it was. It was in two, yeah. where they're promoted to be rulers of the kingdom. Pardon. The last verse of chapter two. We said that that Daniel or that the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego becoming uh, officials over the kingdom, that was a, a gift. gift. And so here at the end of three, would that also be a gift? Yeah, a gift. Okay, is it so... Not a, is it not the lifting up we mentioned? Okay. The lifting up? What's the lifting up? I thought it was the church. It's the lifting up. But, but the, gift, the gifts at the midnight cry, I think, is also the lifting up. The lifting up is ver is that verse? I don't think so. Were they promoted? Yeah, they're promoting is the gift. I guess that's a lifting up. But I I would have thought that when he calls them out of in verse twenty six, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. 
they're coming out of the fire. Doesn't say up, but they become the living testimony, right? Yes. In the furnace. Yes. To everyone, the whole world's represented there. The king's governor, the whole world's yes. watching this. Okay. So I haven't moved all these over to here. But go ahead. It's a little bit interesting that um, this doesn't really describe the eleventh hour workers situation because the way we understand this is more speaking to the hundred and forty four thousand at one level because we know that only the hundred and forty four thousand are going to live through this time period while all the the eleventh hour workers will be martyred. So they will at one level, you know, be thrown in the fire and not come out of that alive. Uh, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's the eleventh hour it's the hundred and forty four thousand who get to the close of probation and are this ensign for the world that they can't touch. It's interesting. I don't know if it plays any into any of it, but it's interesting. I have a question about the hundred and forty Bob had his hand first. Or maybe you did, but I didn't see but after Bob. I just had a question then, you know, in line with, with, with what Tyler's saying, how do you have the lifting up after the close of probation? <coughs> then. You got to have it there just at the prophetic level because there's a lifting up and all these binding offs that take yes, place. Sir. Yes. So how we can explain a lifting up in the when probation is closed, it probably would have to do with the, the gifts of the work of Christ in bringing the redeemed uh, to the conclusion this is the gift that's going to be presented to the universe of Christ's work and efforts. But that lifting up is also at the Sunday law of lifting up is at the midnight cry and all the places really. They yeah. Different. Yeah, the, the, the hard part to me isn't the lifting up. The hard part is what Tyler's hitting on. Is that we know that this history for the 11th hour workers, this is martyrdom. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out of this history obviously is not martyrs. So how can we be saying they're the 11th hour workers? But there is a Spiritual. there is a, a witness that takes place during from the close of probation until the second coming of Christ that is for the universe. They're going to see God's people stand in a time period when there is no longer any intercession for sin, but we wouldn't think that was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if they're 11th hour workers. You still got the same dichotomy. But there is a lifting up in there. But okay. uh, Go ahead. My, my question uh, is along these lines. That, and I've had this question for some time now. Our primary proof for, or maybe I misunderstand this, but I think our primary proof for the 144,000 is that they're virgins. Thus they have to be Adventists. But in the Review and Herald, Sister White applies the parable of the ten virgins to all the professed Christians in the world. Thus, all of the professed Christians in the world are virgins. So what's our primary proof, then, that it's only the 144,000, or the 144,000 only come out of Adventism? Hmm. Is it possible that, that the 11th hour workers could also be a part of that group, and, and why or why not? Yeah. I've struggled with this for some time. Me too. But that would maybe help to clarify why that is you, you have to take you have to just determine symbols by context you can get I don't know just in the Ellen White study Bible you can get her comments on the Seventh-day Adventist Church being Laodicea but you can show that the eleventh hour workers are Laodiceans and you can show that she says the Laodiceans are foolish virgins so there's something about God's people in general being virgins, but in Great Controversy 393, the parable of the ten virgins of Matthew 25 illustrates the experience of the Adventist people. There is an application where the parable of the ten virgins is strictly about Adventism. And in terms of, of getting into who makes up the 144,000, if you're going to bypass that that thought that the Adventists are virgins, you're bypassing other things that support that, such as the covenant. Okay, he's entering into covenant with a specific people. Um, 
He has two flocks. Other sheep I have that are not of this fold. When, when, when I call, they come. So there's a distinction made between the 11th hour workers and the first fruits um, that, that holds. It's, uh, I, I, you know, that's always a tricky one for the 144,000. Are they strictly Adventists or not? But I, this, end, this passage isn't going to solve it. The way how I understood it until now was that um, Ellen White is pretty clear that the 144,000 are lifted up as an insight of the Sunday law, but we know also that, you know, that the 11th hour workers come in after the Sunday law. So they cannot be really part of the group when the ensign is already lifted up and they come in after. But that's the way how I understand it. So the 144,000 have to be made up before that by Evan. This, this is the 144,000 are first fruits. The 144,000 are first fruits. Right? That's yeah. what it says? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when we're seeing the, the development of Adventism at the end of the world and here and here, we're seeing that they're the first roots. They're distinctly different from the great harvest. I think that's a good argument. I think that. But all of them. The virgin argument, but this, this is a better argument, I think. I think all of them got to be put in place. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. Um, could we also find the significance in verse 28 where it says here that. Um, well, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. The wording, change the king's word, that have also a significance where it changes also the decree or something. Probably. That seems like a very pregnant expression. Change the king's word. When we build so much weight on the king speaking um, and changes, what does that mean that they change the king's word? They what? They change the law. Yeah, but how does that fit? How do they change the law? Could that go verse 29, 28. Could that tie in with Daniel 2 or verse yeah. um, in 9? Where the Bukhanis is telling these uh, uh, soothsayers and all that says, says, but, <coughs> but, but if you will not make known unto me the dream, but there is but one degree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before, till the time be changed. Verse, Verse nine. Nine. 9. I just wondering if that would go with what um, <coughs> Brother Henry was saying. It seems to be a little bit of a minor connection there. Ah, Jack was before you. Then Igor, yes. then Daniel. <coughs> the law that was changed was the law of the bowing down to the, to the uh, idol. There was no more law to bow down to that idol. It's the count. It's the what? It's the count. It's the count decree. What's the counter decree? The fact that they stood in opposition to that law, they changed they changed I think the word changed maybe doesn't mean we'll have to look at it, but maybe doesn't mean how we understand the word change. They stood in opposition to they the They made the other word. one void. Yeah, they made the other one void. They said, No, it's not a law. And they didn't they didn't bow down. So right here we're gonna put changed. He spake a counter decree. He changed the decree because of their faithfulness. Um, now I think my comment is it's going in the other direction. Okay. From you, you guys are talking, but uh, Cedric, mm -hmm. Mizak, and Abednego, they were like they were over the affairs of the province of Babylon. So I can see that that parallels um, Daniel Daniel five, sorry Daniel six, where the the counselors, the princes. They changed the king's um, decree. Um, and they forced the king to change, to, to pass the decree. So, um, Cedric, Mizek, and Abednego. Okay, right so you're now, saying right in here, yes, Shadrach, yes. Meshach, and Abednego forced him to change his decree, as yeah, was right the now, case in chapter 6. But right now, I think it parallels better with Daniel making. The king um, changed his last decree, 
last degree and making a counterfeit degree because of his faithfulness. As as Sadrach, Mezek, and Benego made Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar produces a counterfeit degree, Daniel's faithfulness made Darius produce a counterfeit degree. Okay, and Daniel's faithfulness is demonstrated in the binding off period of the lion's den. Yeah. And at the end of that binding off period, he changes the decree. Uh, yeah, he produces a counterfeit decree. Okay, so where is that binding off period in Daniel 6? We will get there tomorrow, but we won't, because we can't go through that many chapters. <laughs> in a part. We got through half today, so we can do the other half tomorrow. Yeah, but we'd already yeah, went we through two thirds <laughs> past tense. That's all right. That's okay. Um, Brother Rick, you want to pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather and study your word that we may understand the things that you want us to understand in the times that we are living. And in order to achieve this, we beseech you, Father, for your Holy Spirit to give us the discernment and the understanding of the things that we look at and try to understand. <coughs> um, please bless our activities this day, be with us throughout this day, to continue to dwell on heavenly things as, long, as well as we do our earthly task. We thank you for all you do for us and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.